Hi, I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. In our previous experiments, everything has been done with one rifle, a Ruger American Rimfire, model 8301. It has a 22 inch barrel and a standard full length buttstock that has a 13 and 3 quarter inch length of pull. I was so pleased with the results from the experiments on shortening the barrel and rechambering that I wanted to try it again in a, a second rifle. And so I was able to get a hold of uh, another one. This is a model 8303. Uh, the difference being it has an 18 inch barrel and it has the compact stock. So the resultant uh, length of pull on this is just uh, 12 and a half inches. Otherwise, the action, the stock, it's, it's uh, nearly identical. If you look at the lower right corner of the chart, you'll see that three kinds of ammo tested had a 28% or better improvement in accuracy. Even for a relatively small database, those are significant numbers. Um, the only surprise I had was with the SK Standard Plus because it shot equally well in both chambers. The rest of this video covers the setups and machining that I used in order to set back and rechamber this rifle. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, why don't you hang out with me for a few more minutes and enjoy the video. Tap these two pins out, I'll remove the trigger assembly. Take this pin out here to remove the bolt stop. I'm going to remove the front and rear sights. And then we'll, there's also a pin diagonally that pins the barrel into the receiver. We got to take all that stuff out before we can take the barrel off. The end of the barrel at the chamber end measures 0.866 inches and I uh, took a block of aluminum drilled a 7 8 inch hole through at 0.875 and that is going to be my collar for pressing off of. If you just try to use a couple of parallels and catch the edge of that without a collar all the way around, you're going to screw it up. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay, I've got things lined up. Let's find out how tight this is here. Oh, it's tight. They didn't make these with the intention of them coming apart. But they do come apart. All right. There we have it. We're good. So after measuring the chamber using the pin gauges and then plotting that on my CAD system, I determined that I needed to take off about uh, 600 thousandths off the shank of the barrel would completely clean up the old chamber when I ream it with the bench reamer. So I've already lopped off about a half inch on the bandsaw <clears throat> and now I've, I've just got it uh, Dialed in, the indicator is reading a couple tenths, which is pretty good. And uh, have the other end inside the spindle supported so it won't wobble around. Um, I'm ready to turn the OD down and set the shoulder back and uh, also reface this barrel and then uh, ream it out. Since I'm not grabbing onto a whole lot of the barrel, I'm not pushing the cuts. I'm just taking light cuts and I'll get her done. I'm just using a wrench to counteract the torque and a, tail, a center in the tailstock to keep it aligned and to control the infeed. I go in about a hundred thousandths at a time and then I back out and clean the flutes in the chamber and I use lots of oil. 
Uh, reaming a 22 chamber removes such a small amount of material and creates such a small amount of cutter torque that I can use this technique, but I would not do this on larger chambers. Here's my setup for milling the extractor slots. Uh, the barrel is leveled lengthwise and I attached a four-sided or a square 5C collet block to the barrel with a paper shim in between the, the collet and the barrel. Um, once I get this collet block attached, it won't be removed until the barrel and the receiver are pressed back together. Also, you can see here that I had to swing the vise 35 degrees uh, in one direction for one of the uh, extractor slots and then 35 degrees the other way for the other slot. The only flat surface on this barrel for reference is the bottom of the rear sight dovetail. So my machinist level fit in it perfectly and I used that to level the barrel axially. Now that I have the barrel level, I mounted a magnetic digital level onto the square collet block and I zeroed that out. And then I needed to rotate the entire barrel assembly seven degrees counterclockwise so that the extractor groups match up with the factory. I only have a half inch of cylindrical diameter to clamp onto, so if I feel any vibration, I'm going to get out of that cut. Fortunately, everything went well. You can see that the height location of the two slots isn't the same either. I decided to use my lathe to press the barrel back into the receiver. The chuck will help keep the receiver aligned, and you can see that I made a bushing uh, with a counter bore on one end for the muzzle and a counter sink on the other for the, the center in the tailstock. Also, you can see that I have a, a large uh, Allen wrench behind the receiver but and against the face of the chuck. That's to counteract the, the pressing force. If you try to hold the receiver in just with friction alone from the jaws, it's going to move on you. So you need to mechanically block it. To align the barrel and receiver, I rolled the chuck so that the receiver was upside down and then uh, used my machinist level on a flat part of the receiver and used my digital level on the flat of that collet block and uh, got both of them zeroed out and pressed it together. I don't have any more pictures or videos of it, but I did set back up in the mill and uh, drilled out that barrel shank and repinned the barrel to the receiver. Uh, it would take a very experienced eye to see that anything has ever been done to this rifle. Uh, I think the motorheads among us might say that we've just built ourselves a sleeper Ruger American Rimfire. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. Have a great day and be safe.